Hey everyone, how's it going? We got one more update today regarding the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pass, which isn't really about the Expansion Pass itself, but rather about the N64 controller that you can buy from Nintendo. Uh, because some people have stated that regardless of the um, willingness to subscribe to Nintendo service, People want to buy this controller to use with things like, you know, obviously 3D All-Stars, but the biggest thing people want to use this controller with is their computers. They want to be able to hook it up to PCs and Macs and play their N64 emulated games with a brand new Nintendo style N64 controller to try to get that original experience in a legal or illegal way, whichever way you guys are doing it. And it turns out that things are not so simple, and honestly, I'm not surprised. Before we get into this story, I want to remind you that we have some giveaways going on. Just head down to the description and the pinned comment to enter uh, that. Also, by the way, uh, we have some other um, bigger stuff happening later this year that you're going to want to be subscribed for. So, yeah, if you would, please subscribe. Help me out. We're trying to hit 80,000 uh, in 2021, so we'll see what happens. All right, folks, so as you can see here, here's the story on Nintendo Life. Yet again, Nintendo Life's been coming through pretty pretty well lately. Uh, and they said the Nintendo 64 controller doesn't play nice with everything for now. Um, Mac, PC, and Raspberry Pi inputs appear to be hit and miss. Uh, there was a lot of chatter around the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack yesterday, plenty of it quite heated on social media. Well, it's social media, so that's not a surprise. Another topic that had less air but is potentially quite interesting is related to the Nintendo Switch Online Nintendo 64 controller, which started to drop through Lucky Gamer's mailboxes. This scribe stint, resulting in long, despairing stares out the window. Of course, enthusiasts that are knee-deep in emulation technology were immediately trying to use the controller on everything but a Switch, and have discovered it's trickier than with Nintendo's past controllers. While the Switch Pro controller, and indeed the previous wireless NES and SNES pads, are pretty easy to connect to other devices, the N64 controller is putting up a bit of a fight. The initial reaction popping up was that the controller just wouldn't connect to the PC, for example, and this came from um, Lolan Online. He says, so this is my first time using an N64 controller, and I didn't realize there will always be a button you cannot reach no matter how you hold it. This is obviously um, just a, <laughs> a, a, a realization for someone who's never used a controller. But then says, has anyone gotten the N64 Switch controller to work on devices outside of Switch? It's detectable by my Mac PC but the inputs aren't being received. Some others have been digging around emulators and discovered that it does work with some, but not others. So AK Family Home mentions the Nintendo 64. The Nintendo Switch Online controller doesn't seem to respond correctly to open emu at the moment, but it does work on other Mac emulators like 64, so hopefully it's something that can be fixed. Um, our own John Cartwright could get the controller recognized by his PC, but then had trouble getting button inputs to register. There's also a Reddit thread that shares varied experiences as some players have had limited success while others struggle to get much usable input out of the controller. It does seem evident that the N64's controller connectivity isn't standardized. Whether this is because Nintendo had to, be, had to do some bespoke setup to connect it to the Switch's emulator or if it was an effort to lock out those connecting it to other devices. It's only known within Nintendo's walls. Ultimately, though, our money would be on enthusiast coders and monitors getting it working on various systems and emulators down the line. So here's the thing about this story, because I'm not surprised. Like, look, Nintendo values the N64 games and everything past the N64, right? GameCube, Game Boy Advance, all that stuff. They, they value these games significantly at a level that some people might find unreasonable. As an example, back during the virtual console days, they were selling some of these games for 10 to fifteen dollars each. Like when people talk about, you know, hey, Nintendo's, you know, service is overpriced. I mean, you couldn't even get access to the amount of games currently on the system for thirty dollars back in the virtual console days. So it was always overpriced. Nintendo's pretty much always overpriced their N sixty four games. Um, outside of obviously back when they originally came out. So my bet. And again, this is just my personal opinion, but I have been covering Nintendo for nearly, you know, 25 years, and I've seen um, their massive distaste for the emulation community. My bet is that they didn't care 
about the NES and SNES controllers working with computers. They just didn't care because there's so many 8-bit dough and third-party controllers that basically do exactly what those controllers do um, that they weren't concerned about it. But the N64 controller is a bit of a unique thing, and there's not people really using the old N64 controllers or using third-party variations of them correctly with emulators. It's just not something that's happening due to the unique design and patents around the N64 controller. So I think that Nintendo tried to make this hard to use with PC, Macs, and yes, even phones and all that. So people are discouraged from using the N64 online controller with emulation and instead would go and obviously just get the games on Switch. I think Nintendo is trying to be cute. Now, Nintendo trying to be cute isn't new. They have attempted many times to thwart things that they create being used with emulators. Uh, so this wouldn't even be a new thing. But again, this would obviously be something that it's very clear is going to be able to be worked around and that the people who made these emulators will be able to patch their emulators to allow uh, the controller to be properly recognized. So it's definitely not something that's going to last for very long. The hacking community is going to be at it. And I'm sure within six months, most of the issues with connectivity with this controller will be a non factor but i do think nintendo did try to make this more annoying because they knew there was going to be potentially thousands of people buying this controller that don't even own a switch uh now why nintendo should care so much right money in your pockets money in your pocket people are going to emulate people are going to download and pirate games um no matter what so why not at least make some money off you could argue hey this is a way for nintendo to profit off of piracy uh but at the end of the day, Nintendo has been very, very anti-piracy, very, very anti-emulator for a long time. And since they can't legally shut down any emulators uh, that aren't using Nintendo's code base, which technically you're not allowed to do legally, so they don't go after most emulators because they use original coding. Um, it's it, 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 This is just Nintendo being Nintendo. Um, so I'm not sure if this is a good story or a bad story. It's just a story that exists. I'm not shocked. Um, I don't think anyone should be shocked. Some people are, obviously, because all of Nintendo's other controllers work just fine with PC and Mac and have no issues uh, and haven't had issues pretty much ever, but this one does. And I'm not surprised. Just like, you know, if Nintendo comes out with a new wireless GameCube controller, if they ever add GameCube games to the service, I would suspect that wireless GameCube controller, which will probably be designed after the WaveBird, will highly likely also present issues with emulators on PCs and all that. So um, Nintendo is just doing what Nintendo does um, and showing that they are really, really, really despise piracy. And it is what it is. So um, that's my take. Anyways, you guys let me know your take down in the comments below. Uh, and yes, folks, I'm still not back in front of the camera. Uh, still got quite um, the project going on here. I don't know. When I'm all done, I'm not so sure you guys are going to notice much of a difference on camera. Although, I might do a quick pan shot to show you guys the whole studio and the work that's being done. We actually have a new set uh, that's going to be built uh, in, in the studio. We're not taking down the old set. We're actually adding another set in, in the studio. I also might um, go back to having a yet another set for the studio um, that involves my computer uh we'll maybe get into that at another time but there is something that i'm i'm working on here uh to potentially use a, a setup that i used to use a while ago that i kind of miss using and want to get back to uh so there's that and until then you know enjoy my voiceover gameplay voiceover you know whatever the hell i'm putting on screen i know right now i'm recording this nintendo life article so that's probably on screen um but you guys are awesome thank you for tuning in thanks for all the support over the years and here's to 80,000 in 2021 Thank you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.